Joining us now, uh, the attorney, uh, Michael Avenatti. He represents Stormy Daniels in her legal battle against Michael Cohn and President Trump, for that matter. Uh, Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, how do you and your client, Stormy Daniels, feel, to, feel today? Uh, what's your reaction when you hear Michael Cohen plead guilty uh, and hear him say he committed campaign finance violations in coordination and at the direction of President Trump? Well, uh, I spoke to my client about an hour ago. We feel incredibly vindicated, Wolf. You know, there's a lot of people like one of your next guests, Richard Blumenthal, who've taken unnecessary shots at me and my client about our legal strategy and how we've gone about this. We've been absolutely vindicated. People like Richard Blumenthal and others have proven to be wrong. Uh, we've been proven to be right, which is always a good thing. But more importantly, Wolf, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. We're going to get to the bottom of what this president knew and when he knew it and what he did about it and uh, the details of this cover-up. On September 10th, the court is going to lift the stay, I anticipate, in the civil case. We're going to march forward with our efforts to place the president under oath and get a deposition where I'm going to be able to ask him questions, and he's going to be forced to answer those questions under oath about his own conduct. We're also going to get a chance to depose Michael Cohen and get to the details of this. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to those moments, and I'm very much looking forward to uncovering the evidence and the facts so we can uh, demonstrate them to the American people. So what do you think this means, legally and politically, for that matter, for the president right now? The, the president's in a lot of trouble, Wolf, and we're, and we're coming for him. Uh, I'm telling you flat out, we're going to come for him. We're going to get this deposition. You know, the president has created an alternative universe on many, many fronts. Um, he thinks that he can lie, uh, lie his way out of situations and create this universe and everyone else is going to live in it. Well, guess what? That alternative universe, sooner or later, is going to come crumbling down and I think we're on the precipice of that happening. The uh, president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, uh, he just issued a written statement and I'll read it to you once again. Uh, there is no allegation of any wrongdoing against the president and the government's charges against Mr. Cohen. It is clear that, as the prosecutor noted, Mr. Cohen's actions reflect a pattern of lies and dishonesty over a significant period of time. What's your reaction to Giuliani's statement? Rudy Giuliani has absolutely zero credibility, Wolf. You know, just the other day he said, truth doesn't mean truth, which is one of the most bizarre and ridiculous statements I've seen on television in a long time. That statement that you just read has absolutely no credibility. It's clear as day if you read the charging documents from the Southern District this afternoon who they're referring to. Donald Trump's fingerprints are all over the crime scene in connection with this, Wolf. We're going to prove it. It's clear as day. And I'm going to say it again. The president is in trouble. Do you think this is an impeachable offense? Uh, will you call on Congress to begin impeachment proceedings? I think Congress needs to seriously consider it, but I'll, I'll say this. You know, the GOP and the Republican Party has shown absolutely zero backbone. Uh, they've been spineless as it relates to keeping this president in check. They've placed party over country, which I think is a disgrace. So I don't have a lot of confidence in their ability to get the job done. You say that uh, you have zero doubt, your word, zero doubt, that Michael Cohen is cooperating uh, in all of this. Uh, but this deal doesn't include cooperation. As far as we know, we've gone through the documents. Uh, Robert Mueller uh, handed this off to the uh, U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York in the first place. Is it possible Mueller doesn't need Cohen's cooperation? Well, that's possible, Wolf, but I want to be really clear about something. All because these documents don't state a cooperation agreement or a requirement for cooperation does not in any way, shape, or form mean that there has not already been cooperation, and I know for a fact that there has been, by the way, or that there will be additional cooperation in the future. Very often, you'll have an agreement such as this that will not include a written cooperation requirement, and yet the, the defendant will cooperate because, as Jeffrey noted, uh, the defendant wants to limit the sentence, wants to cooperate, and wants to remain in the good graces of prosecutors up through and including sentencing. So just uh, elaborate on what you mean when you say that this cooperation is already taking place. Well, I know for a fact that they've been in discussions for a number of weeks relating to how to resolve the potential criminal charges against Michael Cohen. And I know for a fact that there's been information provided by Michael Cohen uh, to prosecutors in the Southern District of New York. Now, what those prosecutors determine 
should be done with that information, that's an entirely different question. Well, were you surprised when you heard that he could face, let's say, five years in prison, Michael Cohen, right now, and a half a million dollar fine? No, I, I wasn't surprised in the least bit. I've been saying for five or six months now, Wolf, uh, I said it before the warrants were executed, that too much faith and confidence had been put on the shoulders of Michael Cohen by Donald Trump and others, and that ultimately he would be charged with serious crimes, and ultimately he would roll over on the president. And I think um, today each of those predictions have been proven to be true. What does this mean, this deal mean, uh, as far as you're concerned, for Cohen's claim that President Trump knew about that very controversial June 2016 Trump Tower meeting uh, that his son, son-in-law, campaign chairman, uh, had uh, with Russians, uh, that he knew about this ahead of time? Well, it's tough to say, Wolf, but I'll say this. Each time that Michael Cohen makes a statement that ultimately is proven to be true regarding Donald Trump, I think that boosts his credibility as it relates to, uh, to various issues. If there's no trial, and there won't be a trial, he's already pleaded guilty, will the public see the evidence against Cohen? Well, I think they may very well uh, see the evidence against Cohen and Donald Trump in connection with our case, because this does not have a bearing as to whether our case proceeds or not. Our case is going to proceed. We're going to proceed with the civil case, and I think we're going to be entitled to uh, all, if not close to all, uh, the information and the evidence relating to that count eight concerning the $130,000 payment to my client. And, you know, I want to I bring your viewers back to that moment, and I'm sure they're going to remember it. That statement that the president, the statements the president made on Air Force One, the people's plane, where he denied any knowledge of that $130,000 payment and directed everyone to his attorney, Michael Cohen. Well, guess what? We've now heard from Michael Cohen. We have begun to know the truth, and we have determined that the president of the United States lied to the American people while standing aboard the people's plane. Michael Avenatti, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.